It's July 7th, 2025, and we have an enhanced risk of severe weather centered on central Nebraska, which also includes southern South Dakota, northeastern Colorado, and northwestern Kansas. This is going to be surrounded by another slight risk of severe weather, which spans much of the central plains from southeastern Colorado all the way up to the northeastern corner of South Dakota. Then we have a marginal, which is going to be associated with the same weather system, which spans all the way through the southern plains to the U.S.-Canada border in Minnesota. And lastly, we have another marginal risk out here in the northeast, which spans from northeastern Ohio to northwestern Vermont. The main threat with this system is going to be widespread damaging winds, and right here, in our main risk area in central Nebraska, we have a hatch 30% risk of severe winds. And in this area, we could see winds in excess of 80 miles an hour. This is going to be surrounded by another 50% risk of severe winds with an increased probability spanning the Kansas and Colorado border. And then a large area of a conditional risk for severe winds highlighted by that 5%. And then lastly, we have a 5% risk of severe winds out here on our northeastern risk area and pretty much anywhere in these lower risk areas is where at least a couple of storms exceeding 60 mile an hour winds can be expected today and our hail risk is going to be confined entirely to the plains with our largest risk being out here in our 15 percent hatch risk area which spans from southeastern Colorado all the way up into eastern South Dakota and in this hatched region hail at least two inches in diameter can be expected. And something interesting about this setup is that we do have a 5% risk of tornadoes surrounded by an associated 2% risk of tornadoes, which is also going to be centered out here in central Nebraska. So the risk of a couple of tornadoes is going to be in play today. And then Tuesday's risk includes two marginal risks. One is going to be out here spanning from the Texas Panhandle all the way up into the Mississippi River Valley. And then another marginal risk is going to be out here spanning much of the eastern seaboard starting in northern South Carolina and ending in Massachusetts. And then there has been a 50% chance of severe weather highlighted for Thursday. And this system does look like it will be pretty significant, so I will continue to update you on this weather system as we get closer. And then flooding has been a big issue recently out here in central Texas and also an issue associated with the remnants of Tropical Storm Chantel. But it looks like the flooding with the remnants of Tropical Storm Chantel is going to be pretty much over, but unfortunately, flooding is still expected to be a concern out here in central Texas, which is truly unfortunate with the amount of rain that I received in the past four days. This area has received upwards of 25 inches of rain in some areas, which is truly catastrophic, and it looks like it will continue into today. In a more visual look at the rainfall expected in Texas today, paints a pretty unfortunate picture. It looks like there will be isolated areas that will receive once again insane amounts of rain up to 10 inches today. But fortunately for the hardest areas hit down here near San Antonio and Austin and Kerrville, Texas, it looked like they will dodge most of this large blob a tad bit north of that. But unfortunately for them, they could still see some isolated pockets of up to two to three inches of rain today. And then pretty much anywhere in this marginal risk can really expect to see anywhere from one to two inches of rain with some isolated pockets of four inches of rain. And that also goes for our marginal risk of flash flooding out here in the eastern parts of the United States as well. Here's our simulated reflectivity, and we can see that everything is going to pretty much start with Sunday's storms. This storm right here that we're going to watch is going to be a MCS, which happened yesterday. And what it's going to do is that it's going to produce an outflow boundary, which will initiate storms right up here in parts of western South Dakota. And it looks like those storms will be initiated by Monday morning with them becoming organized as the low level jet from sunrise kicks in and it appears that they will fall apart for a bit before reorganizing in the afternoon. And once we reach the afternoon, that's when we'll have to worry about more storms. One of the four major clusters that we're expected to see is going to be up here near North Dakota and Minnesota. And this is going to be initiated by a cold front and some troughing in the area. And it looks like with this storm up here, the main threat is going to be some isolated hail in the early stages of it, but it's going to be mostly a wind threat as it pushes on through the day. And then that remnant MCS that actually created the outflow boundary, which initiated these storms out here, is actually going to start to redevelop out here in parts of northern Missouri and southern Iowa, and it will also bring some isolated severe gusts to this region. Now, what's going to happen in the mid-afternoon is that we're going to start to see convection up here in our High Plains Convergence Zone. And then this little cluster right here, which is trying to get its act together more than the other ones down here, it's going to be our main threat, which pushes into Nebraska. And as we can see by late afternoon and into sunset, we get a couple of discrete storms up here near the northern end of our line. And it looks like we could see some embedded supercells. And another thing I want to point out is that our shear vectors are going to be pretty parallel 
to our line, which is one of the reasons why it appears that the threat for a couple of spin-up tornadoes and tornadoes associated with the a couple of discrete supercells at the north end of our line is definitely a possibility. But the main threat with this line would be damaging winds in excess of 75 miles an hour. And it will turn into a Boeing segment by the evening hours and when the low-level jet kicks in, that is a period when spin-up tornado potential could also be increased. And it looks like it will stay pretty organized into the night hours before it is kind of undercut by our cold front up here. And when this happens, when these two storm clusters clash together, is actually a period of intense storms that are likely to occur. So when this happens, the threat of damaging winds and possibly a tornado and some hail would be increased. And it looks like they'll turn more into a weaker line of storms as we push into Tuesday morning. Now, the last of our four clusters is gonna be out here in the Texas Panhandle, which will also be initiated by our High Plains Convergence Zone. And it looks like the main threat with this is going to be entirely wind and hail. And it looks like this could bring some winds in excess of 65 miles an hour. A better look at our Texas storm cluster shows that it will be pushing through Amarillo in the early evening hours. And that is likely when it will be at its peak and producing the highest severe winds. And then after that, it actually kind of falters a little bit and then dies off by early Tuesday morning. The last interesting area up here is going to be in the northeast where we could see a couple of organizing storms which would pose that threat for severe winds in excess of 60 miles an hour. And this is going to be caused by some frontal activity, a couple of low pressure systems back here, which could enhance some clusters in the line and some favorable troughing, which could increase the storm organizational shear. And the main threat of the storm will span all the way from midday into the evening hours. Here are 500 millibar winds and we can see a little short wave dipping down into the northeast, which will help to initiate those storms along that front and also provide some organizational shear. Then we also will see another short wave up here in South Dakota, which will dip in deeper into the central plains as we move further into the day. And just like that, around mid-afternoon is when we're expected to see some storm initiation up here and is also when our short wave starts to peak in intensity. And then in our main risk area, we see some southwestern leaf flow, which would be very characteristic of a wind threat. And then we also see a high pressure system spinning down here in the four corner states, which will help to provide some organizational shear for our storms out here. Taking a peek at a weather sounding from our enhanced risk area of severe weather, we immediately can see why that tornado potential will be increased. We have a decent curve in our holograph and it extends a bit. However, our low level holistic is going to be pretty low and our low level shear is going to be pretty low, but this would be expected to increase when that low level jet kicks in and that is when that tornado potential would be maximized. Then we also see a decent bit of organizational shear at 30 knots. So definitely some organized storms out here. We also see some wind veering, which could help to organize these storms as well. And the lowest cloud level that would be supportive of a tornado threat. We also see quite a bit of cape up here near our freezing layer. And our mid-level lapse rates are going to be decent at 7.8 Celsius decrease per kilometer, which is one of the reasons why some large hail can be expected out here. We also see a quite a bit of moisture, which would be supportive of all hazards of severe weather. And this is about as classic of a skew UT diagram you can get with all this dry air loft, which will help with the lifting of these storms and help to support that threat of severe winds. Then we also see some pretty decent low level lapse rates. On top of all the other favorable ingredients for storms, we also see a pretty juiced up atmosphere at around 3,200 joules per kilogram of CAPE, then a precipital water of 1.09 and a downdraft CAPE of 1300. And this is also going to be coupled with some low relative humidity. So all of this will help to support that threat of severe winds. Then our three cape for this region is actually going to be pretty decent nearing 100, which is another reason why all hazards of severe weather will be in play in our enhanced risk area out in central Nebraska. This is weather sounding from our Texas storms down in the Texas panhandle. And we can see a pretty good elongation in our holograph, which would be indicative of some organized storms. Our low level holistic is going to be low. Our low level shear is going to be low, but our bulk shear is going to be definitely enough for some organized storms at 32 knots. We also see some weak veering in our winds, which could help with some organized storms. Then our LCLs are going to be quite high, which would be indicative of that threat of severe winds. We also see a decent bit of cape up here near our freezing layer, and then our lapse rates are going to be pretty good at 8.7 Celsius decrease per kilometer, so definitely some large hail down in the southern plains. And then our low-level lapse rates are going to be definitely very good, would help to increase that threat of severe winds, along with some dry air loft, which would also help to support that threat. Now, something hindering our storms down here are going to be these lower dew points. Now, high 50s is enough to get some severe storms, but it's definitely not as conducive as per se some dew points in the 60s would be. And also our atmosphere is not going to be super juiced up 
down here in the southern plains not even eclipsing 2000 joules per kilogram of cape but definitely over that 1000 joules per kilogram threshold so absolutely some strong severe storms out here today our precipital water is going to be 1.13 inches and our downdraft cape is going to be 1500 and then this is going to be coupled with some low relative humidity so that's also going to help help to support that threat of severe winds so down here i think in the southern plains our main threat will be some hail and strong severe winds, possibly eclipsing 65 miles an hour. Here's a weather sounding from our Minnesota and North Dakota cluster storms, and immediately we see a straight long hodograph. Our low level list is gonna be low, our low level shear is gonna be low, but our bulk organizational shear is gonna be nearing that 40 knot threshold. So definitely some strong updrafts and organized storms out here. We also see some veering in our winds, which will also help to organize those storms. And our lowest cloud level is not gonna be high enough to eliminate a tornado threat, and because this is gonna be along a front, I would not eliminate the possibility of possibly a weak spin-up tornado out here with our North Dakota and Minnesota cluster storms. We also see a decent bit of cape up here near our freezing level and a mid-level lapse rate of 7.3 Celsius decreasing per kilometer. So definitely some hail up here, possibly greater than one inch in diameter. Our low-level lapse rates are going to be exceptional, which would help to support that threat of severe winds. And then our dew points are going to be 67, which would also help to support that threat of severe winds and some hail. And additionally, we have some drier aloft, which would support that threat for severe winds. Then our atmosphere is going to be quite juiced up for being this north at 3,400 joules per kilogram. So definitely some strong storms out here today. Our precipital water is going to be 1.31 and our downdraft cape is going to be nearing 1,000. And our three cape is going to be 157. So these things will definitely help to increase the threat of some hail severe winds being the main risk and i wouldn't rule out the threat of possibly a weak spin-up tornado along this line and our last weather sounding is going to be our cluster of storms out here in northern missouri and southern iowa and our hodograph doesn't really look too special our low level felicity is going to be low our low level shear is going to be low and our bulk shear is going to be somewhat low but it's going to be nearing 30 knots so I can't rule out some organization in that cluster. We do see some veering in our winds, which would also help to possibly increase some organization. We see quite a bit of cape up here near our freezing layer. Then our middle lapse rates are going to be 7.7 Celsius decreasing per kilometer. So possibly some hail out here, but that's going to mostly be nullified by that linear storm mode. Our moisture is going to be abundant with a 74 dew point, which would support that threat of severe winds and we also see some drier aloft which would also help to support that threat for severe winds we're actually going to have a very juice sub environment in front of these storms nearing 4,000 cape our precipital water is going to be 1.84 inches and our downdraft cape is going to be a thousand so definitely some severe winds associated with this cluster then our three cape is going to be exceptionally high at 254 and because our three cape is going to be so exceptionally high and our lowest cloud level is going to be so low i also wouldn't rule out the threat of potentially a weak spin-up tornado with this cluster out here in northern missouri and southern iowa although it's very unlikely but the main threats with us is going to be some strong severe winds and the last thing is that the remnants of tropical storm chantelle are going to traverse their way into parts of southeastern virginia today bringing with it some weak winds probably not in excess of 30 miles an hour so really nothing to worry about there and then the main rain threat with it is going to be nearing its end with one isolated part near rally in southeastern virginia possibly receiving quite a bit of rain but that's pretty much it and then there's also not really any immediate areas of concern of more tropical development out here in the atlantic